Hello, I'm Jean-Daniel Chiche. I'm uh, pleased to uh, attend this uh, symposium and discuss with you uh, how to assess lung recruitability in patients with uh, COVID-19 infection. In the absence of uh, a specific treatment, what we've learned uh, regarding the treatment of uh, uh, COVID-19 infection is that basically we really have to focus on safe and lung protective mechanical ventilation strategies. And uh, obviously there's little discussion about the fact that we have to limit tidal volume and plateau pressure. However, with the description of uh, uh, different patient phenotypes, there's been more discussion related to um, th the fact that some patients may actually benefit from higher PEEP with aerocutability whereas uh, IP levels may be harmful in some patients that have a low proportion of recruitable lung. And in this uh, very nice review article, um, uh, Eddie Fan and collaborators have proposed to individualize PIP and consider higher PIP only in patients that have a higher potential for lung recruitment. This is very much in line, I would say, with the recommendation proposed by um, the uh, expert um, uh, consensus conference from the SALF, where indeed in patients with the most severe hypoxemia and PF ratio lower than 200, they propose to use uh, higher uh, PEEP level and titrate PEEP if it does actually improve oxygenation. Interestingly, in patients with COVID-19 pneumonia, as Luciano Gattinoni has shown, um, you may have actually different respiratory uh, phenotypes. If you look at these uh, uh, two patients, they have roughly the same PO2 FiO2 ratio. A patient depicted with a, a CT scanner in A is breathing spontaneously, and these patients have a very low elastance, low shunt fraction, low lung stability, and low lung weight. With roughly the same PO2 FiO2 uh, ratio, the patient depicted in uh, picture B, and uh, um, this patient is actually ventilated with a PEEP of five, has a very low compliance, uh, higher right to left shunt ratio with high lung weight and high lung recruitability. And we may wonder whether we could use a CT scan to actually titrate PEEP in this patient. This is more or less what has been uh, proposed by. Uh, Jean-Michel Constantin and his colleagues in this uh, um, single blind randomized controlled trial, the live study, where they propose to use lower PEEP and sometimes even uh, higher tidal volume in patients that have focal lung morphology and maybe better compliance. As you probably remember, this uh, study ended up by being negative uh, in uh, the overall analysis. But looking at um, a subgroup analysis, uh, taking into account the fact that the patients were correctly or incorrectly classified as compared to their CT scan findings, they could see uh, a benefit of such strategies. And this actually points out the fact that the CT scan may sometimes be misleading. And this is also true in patients with COVID-19 infection. Just uh, to give you more clue uh, to this, this uh, very interesting uh, letter coming from uh, Marcus Schulz uh, groups in the Netherlands has clearly shown that uh, some patients have this uh, H phenotype uh, and uh, indeed very low compliance, totally consistent with the CT scan findings. Whereas some, patients, so some of these patients will still have low compliance and rather focal um, uh, lung lesion on the CT scan, and they are called to um, have discordant uh, CT scan phenotypes. And the same is true when we consider patients with the L phenotypes, where indeed there's not a perfect correlation between the compliance and the CT scan findings. This actually points out uh, to the fact that we really need to have uh, tools to, uh, to perform a bedside assessment of the potential for lung recruitment. And we've known for a very long time in ARDS patients that this potential for lung recruitment is extremely viable from one patient to another. 
Obviously, uh, you will find a, a greater amount of potential recruitable lung in patient with uh, ARDS as compared to patient with acute lung injury. But you can see that it's extremely variable from patient to patient and that there is a nice correlation between the percentage of potentially recruitable lung and the lung recruitment measured between uh, peak values of five and 15 centimeter of water. That was the most important conclusion of this paper published almost 15 years ago. So if we step back for a minute, can we identify um, patient and the potential for recruitment based on the Berlin severity? Can we look at patient with mild, moderate and severe RDS and learn something uh, regarding their potential for lung recruitment? The answer in one sentence is yes, if you assess this with a PIP of five centimeter of water. And this is what has been shown in this uh, very nice study uh, from Pietro Chironi, where they've looked at uh, patients with a PIP of five and they correlate the potential for lung recruitment and the uh, um, severity the, as, as uh, assessed by the Berlin definition with a PIP of five. And you can see that the patient with uh, mild ARDS with a PIP of five have a lower amount of potentially recruitable lung as compared to the patient with moderate or severe ARDS. So this is really something very simple that you can do at the bedside to assess the potential for lung recruitment, including in patients with COVID-19 ARDS. Then you can move to something much more sophisticated and look at monitoring respiratory parameters. And uh, we'll discuss in the remaining part of this presentation, respiratory mechanics, FRC measurement and gas exchange. We've known for a long time that we can perform low flow inflation PV curves. And if you start by doing a low flow inflation PV curve with zip, you will obtain this. And then you can repeat the measurement with a PIP, for instance, uh, at 10. Then you need to re really assess how much lung remains in the lung how much air uh, remain in the lung with a PIP of 10. And you do this by performing a long expiration to zip. The difference between the expired volume and the tidal volume represents the increase in an expiratory lung volume induced by P. This has been uh, nicely delineated by uh, Johnson and colleagues uh, 20 years ago. Now, what you can do as, uh, as soon as you have this um, uh, measured this increase in uh, an expiratory lung volume increase by, by PEEP, you can superimpose this two PV curve and assess the recruited volume. This is uh, cumbersome and uh, uh, some people have proposed to use a, a different and alternative method which rely on your ability to measure functional residual capacity at the bedside and expiratory lung volume using the nitrogen washout washing technique, whereby changing the FiO2 by a roughly 10%, you will be able to measure after a couple of breaths, if your patient is metabolically stable, you will be able to measure the changes in FRC. And when you take into account the difference in any expiratory lung volume and also the minimal expected increase in lung volume that can be computed as uh, the difference between the two peep levels multiplied by the compliance at the lowest peep level, you can then have an estimation of the recruited uh, volume. In this uh, study, De La Monica and colleagues have compared these two methods, the low flow inflation PV curves and the measurement in N expiratory lung volume. And you can see that there is a quite a nice correlation between the two methods to estimate alveolar recruitment. And um, this can be used to separate the patients that um, have a higher potential for lung recruitment. You can actually measure lung recruitment using um, these uh, FRC methods. There's a third method that can be used that has been quite recently described and uh, 
it's it's really interesting to look at this paper uh, published in 2018 in the Blue Journal. In this uh, paper, the Toronto group have uh, um, described a phenomenon that was uh, unknown uh, uh, until then, that is an airway uh, closure phenomenon. What you can see here, for instance, in the free PV curves, low flow inflation PV curves obtaining the same patient in, uh, in set A, B, and C with a, a zip condition, a PIP of 8 and a PIP of 18. You can see that in zip, there's virtually no inflation of the lung that's totally superimposed with the um, uh, uh, compliance of the respiratory, the closed respiratory circuits until you reach a PIP of 15. If you start your PV curve with a PIP of 8, you still have the same airway closing phenomenon until you reach this PIP of 15. And this phenomenon disappear when you perform uh, an inflation PV curve starting from a PIP of 18. In patient D, you can see that even in deep condition, you do not see this uh, airway closure phenomenon. The consequences can be really important because the measurement of the airway pressure at end expiration can be totally misleading in the presence of this airway closure phenomenon. Then the risk of ventilator induced lung injury uh, also can uh, be underestimated if you set the PEEP under the airway opening pressure. And you also run the risk of uh, having the development of uh, denitrogenation at electasis if some of the zones are unintermittently reopened. In this study, overall, it was the, the, the PEEP level was 30. Doing so, you can actually define uh, a, a, a PEEP level, uh, um, the, the compliance of the recruited lung, and that's quite helpful to actually um, measure what has been defined as the recruitment to inflation ratio. This recruitment to inflation ratio is quite easy to measure, and uh, um, it can be defined as uh, the difference between the compliance of the recruited lung and uh, the compliance that is present either at uh, the PEEP level or at the airway um, opening level. The higher the recruitment to inflation ratio, the higher the potential for lung recruitment, and in this very nice and quite interesting study, what has been shown is that in the absence of airway closure, uh, you have a nice correlation between this recruitment to inflation ratio and the PF ratio, as well as with the alveolar dead space. And in patients that have uh, uh, higher uh, recruiters, these patients have a recruitment to inflation ratio greater than 0.5. Overall, this could be one of the uh, techniques that is available at the bedside uh, to uh, actually um, define who benefits from um, lung recruitment at the bedside. So in summary, we could say that most COVID-19 ARDS patients can be managed safely with lung protective ventilation, that assessment of lung recruitability at the bedside is now feasible and paramount, and that uh, this could be helpful to know which COVID-19 patient could benefit from IP or not. Thank you for your attention.